Hey everyone, welcome to the top 10 list. Welcome to my top 10 TV shows I gave up on after the pilot. If y'all don't know what a pilot is, it's, well, the first episode of a new television show. Yes, I've seen so many television shows, so fucking many. Oh my god, just piles and piles of television shows, even shows I fucking hate so much. And there are shows I even despise. I've watched past the first episode. I don't know why I did it to myself, but I did, but... There are shows, there are quite, I can make, I can make three parts to this top ten list. And you know what, if this video gets over a thousand views, I will do a part two. Because there's a bunch of shows I've only made past the pilot. And I'm ashamed. And there's lots of reasons why. It, it could be simple that the show sucks. Or it could be another thing, like you just can't get into it and stuff. There are shows I've watched that are truly great shows. Like actually fantastic shows. I just couldn't get into them. Simple as that. So I thought I, uh, what I thought I'd do, what I thought I would do <laughs> with this top 10 list, my numbers 10 through 6 are shows that I think are very good. They're great, solid shows. I just personally couldn't get into them. And 5 through 1 are legit terrible shows. They're shows I watched the first episodes are, and I'm like, this is trash. I fucking hate this. Done. All right? And oh, please don't hate me. I know there, there's going to be, the through my 10 through 6, there's going to be some people who are like, oh, how could you like, keep watching it? Maybe in the future I will. Maybe. Maybe. Just as of now, I stopped after the pilot. Number 10 is the big one right here. Uh, I thought I'd start with number 10 because this is the show I'm more likely to revisit, just not anytime soon. Peaky Blinders. I know. Peaky Blinders is... A show everybody loves, and created by uh, Stephen Knight, uh, starring uh, Killy Murphy and Sam Neill, and even Tom Hardy comes in the show later. The people love the show. It's 1920s gangsters uh, during Prohibition and stuff. Like it's like The Sopranos meets Boardwalk Empire meets The Untouchables. Like this show should have been incredible for me. This, this should be a show that I love. I love The Sopranos. The Sopranos is one of my all-time favorite shows. So why didn't I continue? So I, I watched Peaky Blinders this year, actually. Uh, a couple months ago, actually. It was on Netflix. It's been on Netflix for so long. Uh, I put it on, and I'm like, I'm ready. Ready to watch Peaky Blinders. Oppenheimer's coming out soon. I want to watch Peaky Blinders, see how Killy Murphy is in the show. I watched the first episode. Thought it was fantastic beautifully shot killing murphy is so good sam neil comes in he's great uh i kind of love like the the world they're creating it it really feels like like 1920s man it really looks good it's dungy it's dark it's gross it's it's the 20s baby and you can tell some really crazy shit's about to go down in the first season and for some reason after i watched the first episode I said, okay, I'll watch the second episode tomorrow or something. And I just never got to it. I just, I never, I never planned to keep going with it. I just, I don't know what it was. I always had in my head that I, I'm going to go back to Peaky Blinders. I'm going to continue watching it. Months has passed by and just, I don't have the urge to watch it. And it's weird because it's a great show. It's so well acted. It's very well shot. It's very tightly written. It's everything that I should want in a show, but for some reason it doesn't have that staying power for me. Maybe it's, maybe it's too slow. Maybe I can't connect with the lead character. I don't know what it is. Only time will tell. Maybe one day it'll come to me. I'm like, that's why I can't get into it. But till then, only watch the first episode of Peaky Blinders. Sorry, don't kill me. Number nine, I'm putting in the same vein as Peaky Blinders, and that's Taboo. Taboo is a miniseries created by Tom Hardy and Stephen Knight and stars Tom Hardy. This came out years ago, 2017, 2018, around that time. I wanted to watch it because it's Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy created a show and starring him. I love Tom Hardy. I'll always watch anything Tom Hardy. Even a piece of shit rom-com like This Means War. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I checked. But yes, I checked out the first episode when it came out years ago. It was well done. Like, Tom Hardy's performance is so good. It's, again, 
trips with atmosphere. The music is so good. It's so eerie. There's a lot of mystery to it. There's a lot of answers. I there's a lot of answers. I just I wanted right away. I'm like wait wait wait. What about that? I'm like what, what's gonna happen with this? But again, just like Peaky Blinders, I just didn't continue watching it, and I just don't know why. Again, it could be the same reason Peaky Blinders. Maybe it's too slow. Maybe I just can't get connected with the world or the character. I don't know. Just taboo seemed like something I would love, and just just the way it's filmed and the way it's structured and paced, I'm like, this seems like a show I would love. Why can't I get past the first episode? Please, audience, tell me. I don't know. Moving on. Number eight, Outlander. I know why I couldn't get into this. This is a very simple one. This is another one. It's a good show. The lead actress is so good. This show bored the shit out of me. Sorry. Like, I know people might say, that's why you couldn't get into Peaky Blinders. But I don't know. When I was watching Peaky Blinders, I was pretty into it. I don't know. Outlander, I was almost falling asleep watching. I was so freaking bored. And I know people are like, keep watching, keep watching. You gotta keep going with the show. It takes its time, gets its footing. I get it. But the pilot has to do something to get me to go to the next episode. That's why I give every show the pilot. Like, you have to get me. Like, I've had shows have great pilots. And I go all the way through season one, but then season two sucks or something. Like, they hook me at least for a few episodes. But if you can't hook me in the first episode, then I'm not going to continue watching. And I know a lot of people told me Outlander was such a great show. And, like, it's so creative. It's like a time travel show. It's a historical show, a time travel show. I don't know. I watched that first episode, and I'm like, I get what this is, what they're doing, and it's really cool, and very innovative, but too boring for me. Sorry. <laughs> Number seven. We're on with a comedy show now. Comedy, the most subjective thing ever. Comedy. Sorry, this is such a big show. Every, so, I have so many friends who love this show, and they for years told me to like, come on, give it another chance. I probably won't. That's is it's always sunny in Philadelphia. I know people love this show. They quote the show. Was it like it's thirteenth, fourteenth season? I don't fucking know. I watched the first episode a couple years ago because everyone like quoted it. I have a lot of friends who quote this show and they love it and like oh Danny DeVito so funny. I watched the first episode to see what it was all about. I'm like oh, let's see what this always sunny Philadelphia. Let's see how funny it is. I don't know what it is. That first episode, I didn't laugh once. And that's Charlie Day. I think Charlie Day is very funny. And Danny DeVito doesn't come to the next season. I'm like, oh, there's no Danny DeVito. And I just didn't continue watching it. And I told my friends this, and they all said the same thing. They're like, first season's the weakest. Keep going with it. Or just skip season one and go right to season two. A lot of them told me to do that. Just skip season one go right to season two. But I didn't. I just like... I don't know. I don't like... And I get the whole point of the show is that all these characters are selfish, piece of shit people. They're horrible human beings. And these stupid, horrible things happen to them. And it's funny because they're pieces of shit. So you're glad this shit happens to them. But I don't know. I just, I just think Seinfeld did it so much better. And I feel... I don't know, a lot of people have called this like the modern Seinfeld. But I just think Seinfeld was funnier. And even though the Seinfeld characters like George and Kramer and Elaine... Jerry, they were all very selfish people, and they weren't always the most likable. But at least they had something, this charm about them, or some likability in them, and some humanity in them. And just how they treat such minuscule things. And it was such, it was a much smaller scale, but like really insane things apparently happened in the show. I'm like, I don't know, it just doesn't sound that interesting to me. I don't know. I know people are going to say I'm wrong. Probably am. <laughs> all right, number six. Justified. Justified is a show that looked really cool. It's a cop show. It's uh, Timothy Oliphant. He's like a bounty hunter with a cowboy hat. Cult Star Wars and shit. Sounds awesome. And apparently it is awesome because it, it came back with like a little reboot or something. I don't know what it is. I just, I can just couldn't get into it. I thought it was well acted. Um, I thought Walton Goggins was really good. I thought... I don't know, I felt like, you know, it was like, 
had its style, it still felt pretty generic to me. Um, it still felt like a typical cop show. And um, the way people were talking about Justified and building, like, building my tension on it and just, like, people were saying that it was, like, such a unique show, but it felt like a lot of cop shows. Like, it felt like NYPD Blue. It felt like Law & Order sometimes. It still felt like a typical cop show. So I just didn't find anything special about it when I watched the first episode. And again, I know it gets better and I know it gets great, but I don't know. Just didn't bother to keep going. Sorry. All right, now we're going five through one. These are actually shows I find terrible. Ten through six, I can admit they're great shows. Just couldn't get into them. Five through one, ho, oh, 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 we're in a whole new ball game. All right, coming at number five is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This show sucked. <laughs> I... And I, I I watched this when it came out. So I think this show, when did this show come out? Like 2013, 2014? I don't know fucking know. I was excited for it. Because I watched every show made by Joss Whedon. Say, would you well about the fucking guy now? But I always liked his shows, Joss Whedon. I loved Firefly, Buffy, Angel, Dollhouse. I've always enjoyed his shows he's created. So Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., I was still, I was still very much into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So I'm like... Cool, make a show all about S.H.I.E.L.D. and Coulson. Sounds cool. I watched the first episode right when it came out. Holy shit, was I disappointed. I was like, that's it? That's, that's, this is Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D.? Ugh. I thought it was, I looked, it looked so cheap looking. Um, I don't know what was happening. It just looked like every generic superhero CW show. Like a villain of the week and... It's supposed to be like this conspiracy show of Coulson. Is it the real Coulson or not? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I thought the show would have had like really smart writing and like really likable characters like most Joss Whedon shows. Because think about Joss Whedon. Say what you will about the guy. In all his shows, he has great characters. Like Buffy Summers, Xander, Spike, Captain Malcolm Reynolds, and Wash, uh, River, Simon Tam, Jane... Uh, and Nora, um, Angel, <laughs> Winifred Burkle, uh, Echo, like a lot of great shows, a lot of great shows with a lot of great characters. I didn't give a shit about any of these characters in the first episode. And every Jaws Whedon show has great first episodes. Buffy, Firefly, Dollhouse, Angel, all great, all great pilots. This pilot could care less. And it even had, um, what's his name? Um... I forget the actor's name, but the guy who plays uh, Gun from Angel. I'm like, oh my god, they have fucking Gun in the show, and like he, he doesn't do much. He's so boring. I'm like, really didn't like the show. And I saw, like, as the years went by, with the direction they did with the show, I'm like that sounds so stupid. So I'm glad I bailed at the pilot. <laughs> Number four, Fear the Walking Dead. So glad I, I didn't stick with this show. And again, I heard from rumors and stories of what they did and the direction they went to. I'm like, oh, I, went, I bailed out of this one. I watched the premiere uh, episode when it premiered on AMC. Did not like what I was watching. Didn't like these characters. I thought it just seemed just like The Walking Dead. Just different city. Different characters who were bland and uninteresting. The kills didn't even feel very creative. Just... I just went, no, I'm out, no. Like, I was already teetering on leaving The Walking Dead at this time. So when they brought Fear the Walking Dead, I'm like, let's check it out. Maybe it does something completely unique and different from Walking Dead. It doesn't. It's just a different title. <laughs> and yeah, don't expect me to watch the Daryl Dixon show. I just don't care. I'm completely gone from Walking Dead. So, no. All right, number three. My number three and number two are almost like the same reasons why I hated them. But they're also the same reasons why I watched the first episode. So number three was Lethal Weapon, the show. Why did I watch Lethal Weapon? Because I love Lethal Weapon. Riggs and Murtaugh, baby. And they're doing a show. I, I'm like, that sounds so stupid. I wanted to see for myself how stupid it was. It was really stupid. <laughs> number two, Rush Hour. So stupid, it looked stupid. I watched the first episode to see how stupid it was. It was stupid. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. 
That's all I gotta say. Um, all right, I'm gonna get to my number one. The, the, my number one. Um, I've been wanting to talk about this for so long because it's it's so it's a kind of a silly story. It's so dumb on my part for thinking it was something. I don't know. So okay, my number one is My Little Pony. Friendship is magic. <laughs> okay, hear me out. Hear me out. The Bronies, shut up. But everyone else, hear me out why I watched the first episode of this. Okay, so my cousin is a brony. And, you know, if you're a brony, that's fine. I'm not here to judge. It's not what I'm here to do. But he's a brony. And he told me about this show to watch. He's like, he knows I like cartoons still, like Avatar, Korra, and stuff. Like, he's like, there's a cartoon you need to watch. I'm like, oh, okay. What's it about? He's like, I'm not even going to tell you what it's about. I'm just going to show you what's it about. I'm like, oh, what's it called? He's like, it's called Friendship is Magic. He didn't say My Little Pony. He said Friendship is Magic. I'm like, Friendship is Magic? What is that? I I, I, I should have known it was My Little Pony because I remember the My Little Pony commercials with the toys. Friendship is Magic. But it was including in my head what Friendship is Magic. I thought it was like a comedy cartoon show, like a Rick and Morty or, or Gravity Falls or something. That's why I thought, because my cousin knows what kind of cartoons I watch. And I, I love Gravity Falls. And I was talking about Gravity Falls to him. Like, the day before, so I thought maybe it was a show, like Gravity Falls or something. Because all he told me was the title, Friendship is Magic. Gotta watch this show. I'm like, okay, okay. So, later that night, he puts it on. He's like, I'm gonna put it on. I'm like, alright, put it on. Let's see what Friendship is Magic is. He puts the this show on, the first episode, My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. I thought he was joking. When he put this on, I'm like... Is that what he means by friendship? It's My Little Pony? I'm like, I thought he was kidding. I was like, this is a joke, right? He wants me to actually watch this little kid's show about magical ponies. I'm like, okay. I was like, confused about what was happening. So I thought in my head, is this like a spoof show? Like, is it like an R-rated My Little Pony show? Is it a show making fun of My Little Ponies? I'm like, something's up. But no, it's actually just a My Little Pony show. So yeah, I'm just sitting there watching this 20 minute first episode of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. And nothing funny, it was literally just a kid's show about My Little Ponies. Seems like a show for little girls mostly, but again, I'm trying to judge. I know there's people who love My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. I don't understand it. I really don't, I don't get it. There's nothing really, like, compelling about it, or, like, I thought maybe, like, with the, I was trying to figure out what he was trying to show me, like, is there, like, a deep meaning in this show? Is it all, like, a metaphor for something? No, it's just a, a show about magical ponies. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what the hell was happening. I was trying to come to grasp with reality of why my cousin... My 25-year-old cousin was showing me this. I, I just didn't know what to think. And then I watched the first episode, and after, he's like, what'd you think? I'm like, that was My Little Pony. He's like, yeah, it was. I'm like, actually, My Little Pony. Like, friendship is, I thought you were showing me, like, a comedy show. He's like, well, so did, did you think it was good? Like, it was, it was fun, right? I'm like, not really. <laughs> it's just a kid's show. Like, and I know that's a lame excuse, but it's just a kid's show about magical ponies. Nothing uh, all that compelling or interesting for me. He's like, ah, oh, you didn't like it? I'm like, not really. He's like, ah, oh well. And that's it. I don't know. I don't know. Is there, is there something in the show that I just don't see? It just It's just a silly show with Magic ponies that seems like five-year-old girls watch. Why is there a lot of older guys that watch My Little Pony? I don't, I don't get it. Is it a fetish? I don't know. <laughs> like, I don't know what it is. Like, I, I, I don't want to be a judgmental asshole. I just, I need to know. If you're a brony out there, please comment below. Tell me exactly why. And I'm not here to make fun of you. I'm not here to judge you. I legit want to know why. 
older guys like My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Because when I watched the show, I just saw a silly kid show. I didn't see anything meaningful or compelling or something adults could, you know, gravitate towards. I just saw a kid show and I was so confused of what I was watching and why am I watching this? So please let me know. Please, just, I really want to know. So yeah, thank you all for watching this top 10 list and give me your top 10 uh, television shows that you gave up on after the pilot. And if you want to see a part two of this, I'll do that. So please like, subscribe to the channel, join the dark side.